Hey y'all, Harold here, and today I wanted to go over building your own lineman's handset. Uh, so this is one that I built years ago um, out of an AT&T phone. I called it the Pirate Phone. You can see it's gotten its share of wear and tear, uh, so much so that the electrical tape had started to wear off, and so I had started going back and rewrapping everything and cutting the keys back out because that's how classy I am and uh, decided this is insane um, so just a quick look at what this is and why we had to do it this way on this phone uh, in the base uh, not not all of the internals of the phone were held inside the handset there was a base uh, that goes with this that held some uh, some electronic components as well so that made things a little bit difficult um, but I said you know what this is this is crazy what am I doing um, this is insane so I still have a good alligator clips here for hooking the phone back up so we might reuse those we might not um, but I said what can I do get rid of this piece of junk that I bought from Radio Shack or somewhere for I don't know probably 15 bucks um, I mean the phone functions but yeah this was nonsense and I don't I mean who uses an analog phone at home anymore the only real reason to have an analog phone for people like us is uh, going out to client sites and doing uh, testing on site um, whether it's uh, an analog phone system coming in inbound or uh, their internal phone system. So uh, what I did is I went over to good old Goodwill and for a whole $2.99 I found this bad boy. This is an AT&T 210 um, Trimline 210 uh, because apparently back in the Oh, looking at this, Let's see what the copyright date is. I guess it's probably late 80s, early 90s. Uh, yeah, it does not have a date that I can see just by looking at it. But I decided to take a gamble and see if uh, the internal electronics of the base were going to be uh, less, or since the handset was so fat if I could fit the internal electronics from the base inside the handset. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we'll put the handset over here for now and we will need a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two bottom screws here. And I don't know if there's going to be anything under these feet or not, but let's find out. Uh, no! Perfect. Whole two screws that hold this thing together, and look, what do you know? Look at that. There are no electronics in here. It's actually just a. It's just wired up to convert your. Um, what you call it? Uh, oh, your handset line. I forget what, but the uh, register jack this is. Um, yeah, whatever, your handset line. Because <laughs> I believe uh, your actual, if I remember correctly, these are called RJ9s. It's been a while. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and figure out how to get this guy out of there. Looks like I need a small little flathead screwdriver to pry up this retaining clip. So let's get in there. All right. So yeah, this just simply is a two-wire connection from uh, your standard RJ9 to your wall to the handset. Um, so already I'm thinking, uh, why is this cord even here? Um, can we get this jack to be right there? So let's pop open the handset and see what we can see. Yeah, get rid of this and work with just our handset here. So, don't see any screws, so 
So I'm going to assume this just sort of pops apart. All right. Cool. And there's a little hinge up there. So this must be our ringer. Uh, and here is our RJ9, or well, whatever, handset connector. RJ7. We'll call it a 7. <laughs> And just got our two wires, and I'm gonna have to figure out which is which here. That's easy enough. Looks like green is on the, well, if we flip it this way, green is on the right, and white is on the left. But we can test that real quick with a continuity test. There we go. So I am correct. Perfect. Green is that one and white is the other. This guy back out of the way. And that's going to come in handy because what we're going to do is we're actually going to chop this off and then uh, rewire it up here. And let's get these wires straightened out. Let's see if our pins are any different. Uh, for our two wires and green is there that's on the okay perfect that's on the outside left and this is here again on the outside left all right well that actually makes things really easy um, so what we can do is grab some snips and we'll just take this wire stripper here and we're going to go ahead and chop this connector right off the end right here cool and we'll leave just a smidgen on this side as well that way we can keep track of what's what into some issue here with the jacks being different um, let's get this ringer out of here it's hot glued in uh, da, 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 da. there's the glue there's the glue and fastened there less stuff in the way but that's the side we actually need <laughs> so we need to look at our connection here and how this slide slides in so there is some grooves that that just rides in and our new connector since it's the larger we're going to have to make some modification. Ooh, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, a little bit. Not much. Cool. So, what we'll need is a file to file that down. And I already got the hot glue gun out expecting that this is going to be a thing so we'll just take some hot glue and glue everything in place and connect these wires up together and that's really all there should be to this Let's see if we can get our connector lined up Because we do want this to be modular, so we can use a regular phone and phone line with it if we need to. So that is working. <laughs> we are going to have to get that hot glue in place, though. We'll get our knife out of the way. Since that works, let's go 
go ahead and see about getting the wire stripped down. These don't even get down far enough for these guys. So we might have to use uh, the old smoker's method. There we go. Got some bare wire. And our green is our white. And you know what, actually, let's see if we've got the appropriate we could do a we could do a real real job here. Yeah, there we go. Cool. That's done. <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, you will fit. Awesome. So, let's kind of give a test see here how we're going to do this. So, we know that's going to have to go there. And we want you this direction, actually. right there yeah oh yeah perfect that's what we'll do leave you in awesome so let's get the hot glue gun warmed up and we'll come back and proceed from there all right we got the glue gun here warmed up and hot and ready to go so let's go ahead and give her a squirt Oh, yep, there we go. Just get along the seams here to hold it in place. let that cool down for a minute while that's doing its thing we can go ahead and get the uh, speaker or the ringer back in place I suppose perfect that should do the trick and we'll go ahead and let that all cool down and harden up and come back and get this thing assembled and hook it up to a tone generator and test her out, make sure she's still working. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy put back together. I'm not sure if it's gonna fit, so we got these little black tabs on either side. Um, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to pop those out. Not a big deal. So rough pliers, just for that purpose. Let's go ahead and get everything crammed in here. 
start closing you back up. Yep, that's gonna bump right up against there. So let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> fix it. What we're going to do, because this is such a sleek black device that cost all of $3 and we don't really want to put that much more time or effort into it, go ahead and let that be like that. And electrical tape. It fixes everything. <laughs> So, grab some scissors and some electrical tape. Electrical tape. <laughs> the IT man's duct tape. So, let's grab a strip like yay. Go ahead and get you on right here. And grab another piece like so. Get you on. And that should work for me. Oh, and I'll have to pull it back apart. This uh, slider for the loudness got goofed up. But let's, before we do anything else, if it's loud enough, I don't care. Uh, one setting's good enough for me. But. Let's go ahead and hook up our handy dandy tone generator and see if we get tone. Alright, we've got continuity. Oh yeah, that's plenty loud. I'm not getting a ring though if I have it on pulse or solid. That's okay. I don't really need the ringer per se because if I'm doing line work I'm typically not looking for a ring. I'm looking for outbound. <coughs> I'm testing for connectivity. So that might have been why the phone was donated to Goodwill. <laughs> Uh, the ringer doesn't work, but for three bucks, hey, I've got myself a handy dandy little line clip set. I can go up, hook right into a 66 block with our alligator clips, and uh, dial out. So that's all we got for today. Um, hope you enjoyed, found it interesting. Uh, go ahead and like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Um, if you're interested in more content like this, or uh, other IT uh, related stuff, software, hardware, little projects like this, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and uh, have a great day and we'll see you next time.